In this video, I will teach you to calculate the magnetic field due to an infinitely long wire. Now, if you have followed my videos, then you would remember that we have actually solved this before. But do you remember how we solved it before? Well, what we did first was we calculated the magnetic field due to a finite wire by using bias Edwards law. We did all the integrals and then eventually we substituted alpha and beta equal to 90 degrees. When the wire becomes infinitely long, these angles tend to become 90 degrees and eventually we found out the strength of the magnetic field. Okay, that's what we did. If you don't remember that, you better go back. Anyways, I'm now going to recalculate the magnetic field due to an infinitely long wire and this time I'm going to be using Ampere's law. So let's begin. So here is our wire. So the wire carries a current outside the screen and we are interested in calculating the magnetic field at some distance A. This is the top view and this is the side view. Everything, the setup is exactly the same. But this time we're gonna be using Ampere's law. All right, so let's calculate. To use Ampere's law, we have to first choose a loop. Okay, now Ampere says you can choose whatever loop you want, but if you want to get this derivation as simple as possible, then we have to choose a loop cleverly. What kind of a loop could we choose, G? Well, let's think about it. We know that the magnetic field at every point is going to be tangent to this circle, and the magnetic field on this circle is going to be a constant in magnitude because it's at the same distance a. So it would be wise to choose a loop in which the magnetic field B and DL are in the same direction. Because of that, we don't have to worry about the dot product in the Ampere's law. And one more thing we could do is we have to choose a loop in such a way that the field value is a constant everywhere on the loop. Field is uniform. Everywhere on the loop, we would want B to be uniform. That way, we could take the B outside the integral. I don't think we need any more clues than this. The loop has to be circular, okay? So let's choose exactly the same loop. Whatever is the magnetic field line, we're gonna use the same thing as our loop. This is going to be our Amperian loop. Okay, and we're gonna travel in exactly the same direction. So our DL, I'm gonna choose yellow for DL. I'm gonna, our DL is going to be in this direction. So I wanna keep everything as simple as possible, all right? So because of this, our integral becomes extremely easy. We have to calculate B dot DL, but since B and DL are in the same direction, theta is zero, and therefore cos zero is one, that makes this integral um, we can get rid of the vector. So it just becomes BDL. And then, since B is a constant, as in it's B is uniform, everywhere on the loop, the magnetic field must be the same because the points on this loop are at the same distance A from the wire. And it's for that reason, I can remove this B outside the integral and we now get integral of dl. Integral of dl is just addition of all the dls. What do you get when you add all the dls everywhere? This is, this is easy. You end up with the length of this loop. And the length of this loop is just the circumference. And so that's 2 pi a. So that is the left hand side. Now, if you use Ampere's law, the law says that this has to be equal to mu zero times I enclosed. And to enclose the current, we have to either attach a flat surface, meaning take that loop, dip it in the soap solution, and ask yourself what current penetrates through that soap solution. So if you dip it in the soap solution, the soap solution would attach itself to the loop like this, and the entire current I punches through, and therefore you would have the current I over here. So the entire current I becomes I enclosed. I'm pretty sure you can see it from this view as also. You can see over here, the entire current I punches through. And even if you choose an open surface, you will get the same answer. Ampere's law works 
either ways, whether you choose a flat or an open surface. And therefore, the magnetic field turns out to be mu naught i divided by 2 pi a. Ta-da! Look at this. How many steps did we require? Couple of steps, isn't it? No integrals. This is the power of Ampere's law. In certain very special cases, and those special cases are, and those special cases are when you have cylindrical symmetry. You can see over here, if you draw a cylinder around this wire, then everywhere on that cylinder, the magnetic field must be uniform. The strength of the magnetic field must be uniform. In such cylindrical symmetries, and also in some other specific cases which we will explore, Ampere's law is extremely useful, all right? Okay, now this works as long as we are outside the wire. So this is for outside. But Ampere's law will work even if we want to calculate the magnetic field inside. We, we wouldn't even try to do that using the biosever, okay? But we will do that now with the Ampere's law. So let's, let's consider what happens if we go inside. So here is the setup. This is the same wire which I have zoomed in. It carries the current I. This is the cross section of a wire. It's not some sort of a sphere or something, okay? This is a wire, all right? I have zoomed in over here, so the cross section looks big. And um, I'm, <clears throat> the, the radius of the wire is, the cross section is capital R. And we are going to look at, again, the strength of the magnetic field at some distance A. And we're gonna make sure A is now smaller than R. The question now is, what is the magnetic field? But again, if you use the right hand thumb rule, the magnetic field line must circulate this way, clockwise, uh, anti-clockwise, because the current is outside. And again, I'm gonna use the same loop. I'm gonna call this as my Amperian loop. That makes a lot of sense, isn't it? So this is going to be my Amperian loop. Again, notice that the magnetic field, B and DL, are going to be in the same direction. So if we calculate the integral of b dot dl over the entire loop, that's what Ampere asks us to do, then we will end up with b dl, b comes out, and you get integral of dl, which is just two pi a. So everything remains the same. And Ampere says that this must be equal to mu zero times i n closed. And now big question mark over here. What is the i n closed? Well, let's do the same thing. Let's dip this green loop into the soap solution and a soap film attaches itself over here. And now the current enclosed is the current inside. Is that current the entire current i? No, because there is this part of the current over here, which I'm shading with yellow, and that part of the current has to be included. The magnetic field B this time is only due to the current that is inside the loop. The entire current is not enclosed. You see previously, if we go back to what we did before, the entire current I was enclosed because A was much bigger than small r. You understand that? Entire current was enclosed, but now A is smaller. And so only a part of the current is enclosed. How do we calculate that? How much current is enclosed? Well, that's actually quite easy. I'm going to assume that the current is distributed uniformly over the entire area, so that's going to be an assumption, uniform distribution. And to calculate this, let me ask you a different question so that you know you can use this as an analogy. Imagine I told you that there was a square region in which there are ants, okay? And let's call this region to have a length of, let's say this square has a length of 10 centimeters, and there are a total of 500 ants in this. And again, I'm going to assume uniform distribution, so constant density everywhere, uniform density. Now, my question is this, what if I choose a small area, a small area, which has a length of, let's say, two centimeters. How many ants are present over here? What is the number of ants present over here, given that we have a uniform distribution? 
How would we do this? Because if you can answer this, we're gonna, we can calculate the IN closed over there. I want you to pause the video and, and calculate over here and then see if you can use the same, same procedure over there and get me the final answer. Try to do this yourself, pause now. Okay, so let's see what the answer turns out to be. Well, what we understand is that there are 500 ants and they occupy an area of 10 times 10, 100 centimeters square. But we are asked in a small area of two times two, four centimeters square. Well, how many, how many ants are present over there? Well, like we can just do a cross multiplication, okay? Or you know what, we can calculate per centimeter square how many ants are present. Let's do that that way, it'll be more intuitive. So 500 ants in 100 centimeters square means I have 500 divided by 100 ants per centimeter square. That means I have five ants per centimeter square, okay? This is not an average value. It is actually, if I were to choose every small square of one centimeter, I would actually get five ants in that because of uniform distribution. And now it's very easy. I have to deal with four centimeters square, therefore I just have to multiply this by four, right? One centimeter square contains five ants, four centimeters square will contain five times four, that's 20 ants. So I get 20 ants over here. We're gonna do the same thing over here. You see, the current I is distributed over this entire area of pi capital R square, all right? So current I is distributed over the area of pi capital R squared. But we are not interested in the entire area. We are only interested in the green area and the green area is pi small a squared. So how much current is present over here? Well, just like with the ants, we will first calculate how much current is present per centimeter square. Okay, since pi r square, so many centimeter square contains i amperes of current, per centimeter square would be i divided by pi r square. This is the current per centimeter square. But then I want in this much area, so I just have to multiply by pi a square. I hope I have not confused you. This is exactly the same thing over here as you see over here, okay? If you want, you can pause for a moment. Make sure that you've understood this. Simple, simple mathematics. And so from this, we understand that the I enclosed, so let me rewrite this, two pi A is equal to mu zero into, I enclosed is just I A squared divided by capital R squared. And therefore the magnetic field is equal to mu naught into i, one a cancels, a divided by two pi r square. Ta-da, we have gotten the answer. Again, just look at this. Look at how many steps we needed. I mean, we required a couple of steps to do a little bit of algebra over here, but no integrals. If you try to do this using Buyos of R, it's going to be horrible extremely horrible seriously try it yourself it's a challenge i'm not gonna do that because i have ampere's law i don't care so so you see ampere's law helps us to get out of such troubles where buyasovar will just give us nasty integrals okay anyways let's just play with this equation a little bit no we're not gonna play with it we're just gonna analyze this equation here it sees here you can see that the magnetic field is proportional to a Whereas when you go outside, you see the magnetic field is inversely proportional to A. Why is that? Well, notice that as the, as the length, uh, the, the radius increases, as you go farther and farther away from the center, you're enclosing more and more current. And because of that, you end up having stronger magnetic field. But once you are outside, so once you go somewhere over here, then you're no longer enclosing more current. You, you're already enclosing the maximum current of I. You're not going to enclose any more current and therefore as you go farther away the magnetic field decreases Okay, so if we are to make you know one last thing if we are to make a plot of the magnetic field versus a and if this represents say a equals r then inside the Inside the wire. It's over here magnetic field is proportional to a so I would get a graph which is going to be ab absolutely straight line Okay, it's going to be straight line. And then outside, I have, to, I have to follow this rule. That's a hyperbola. That's a rectangular hyperbola. So it's gonna be like this. So this part represents B proportional to one over A. 
and this represents B proportional to A. And if you want to calculate the maximum value, you see the maximum happens at the surface. That makes sense, right? You go farther and farther and farther and farther. At the surface, you get maximum and you go farther away, it becomes minimum. And if you want to calculate what that maximum value is, at this point over here, well, we can just substitute A equals R. So if you substitute A equals R, you get surface magnetic field and that's going to be mu naught I divided by two pi capital R. You could have also substituted in this equation, you end up with the same answer. Okay, so this was a summary to tell you how awesome Ampere's law is. We're gonna use Ampere's law more. We're gonna see again cases where Buyer Savar just is just hopeless. But Ampere's law is going to be useful. Alright, so see you next time. Stay tuned.